Um, let's go back to players of the game. Offensively, Macon Wilson, he had a career day. Uh, made a lot of big plays. He's had a really solid season for us on offense. Big playmaker was Justin Jackson. He really got the run game going. It started up front. Thought our O-line played very well. But Justin made a bunch of big plays. Defensively, Kyle Cairo uh, was very active. You know, had his hands on two other balls uh, with opportunities for big plays, but uh, really had a, an outstanding game. I thought fit pretty well in the run game also. And then big playmaker was Tyler Lancaster. Um, you know, again, he didn't make a bunch of sacks and so on and so forth, but the way the consistency that he's demonstrated inside, uh, I think has really allowed our linebackers to flow pretty freely. Special teams wise, it was Blake Gallagher. Uh, you know, he represents our kickoff team. I thought we had a solid day against a really outstanding kickoff return team. Yeah, practice players were Jace James on offense, Joe Spivak and Chris Bergen shared the defensive practice player of the week and Bryce Jackson uh, on special teams. Uh, as a coach, whenever they tell us to play, as a dad, I'd like to kick off at 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to wake up and uh, have food on the bus to go and uh, so I can enjoy my Saturday with my kids. But um, I don't think the Big Ten office has gotten that memo from me. So I'm a big 11 o'clock fan, huge, big fan. Always have been, always will be. I think it's a great time to play. But, um, you know, whatever time they tell us we're going to play, we're going to play. We need to show up ready to go. It's my job. Uh, I would say the reason why my name's on the stadium twice is because of an unbelievable defensive line. It wasn't because of me. So, um, you know, there's nobody that has more appreciation uh, for defensive linemen than me. And um, our guys here know that. All the guys that have played D-line here during my time, even when I was a linebacker coach, uh, understand my my affinity for them. And, and what it, this game – demands and expects of them for us to be successful defensively and successful as a team. Uh, you know, you got one of the greatest players in our program history, and when you're a younger player, to be able to watch and emulate his process is, is a true blessing. And I think Lark and all those guys in, the, in that room have really learned a ton because Justin's a great teammate uh, in, in the way that he goes about his physical preparation, his mental film study, his practice habits. Um, you know, he's developed so much in our program uh, to the player that he is right now. Um, I, I think he's just been a great, uh, great leader in that room to show those guys exactly what it takes to be a great player in this league. Yeah, I mean, I think just over the years, especially when they came in as freshmen, um, we just hung out and everything we've done on and off the field. And, and that's really toppled over to this year um, now that, like, I've been with him for two years now, too, and this is the third. And, and, Pretty much their whole class, the class before mine and my class, like we've just been bonding over those years. And the freshmen that have just come in, like they were thrown right into it, and and they've accepted it. They come over to we go to each other's places. Um, honestly, this is just it's just the closest knit group because we made it so, and that translates to the field. Like we trust each other, you know. So I could look at Sam Miller. You know, he's a freshman, but he's been hanging out with us. He's been with us. Um, we're as close as a family, and. Uh, I trust him on the field and he trusts me. So, you know, it really helps on and off the field. Uh, we need to make plays and we need to make plays early and often and, you know, throughout the whole game because, um, you know, it's a physical game, especially playing in the Big Ten. And we need to set the precedent that, you know, we're going to go out there, we're going to, um, in the first quarter, bring the fight and make sure that we're on top of our game so that the rest of the team, the linebackers can flow off of us and, you know, the DBs can play well in the back and uh, we'll have like a cohesive unit on the field. And then, you know, when we bring the energy, it helps the offense as well to be able to, you know, drive down the field and get points on the board. Uh, when you've been through, uh, you know, overtime before, it makes you more comfortable in that situation. Um, I think we were still on edge as we should be because it is overtime and anything can happen in that type of period. It's a 25 yard field and um, you got to make a play. And I think that going into this one, we felt more confident, but it's important that we don't get complacent in that type of situation. Like we've kind of challenged ourselves and we've kind of set a precedent now that, you know, like we need to put finishes on a board and like we need to finish every block possible. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, just like we've just changed uh, our attitude and our culture. Uh, just over the last few weeks, and obviously it's showing good results. I didn't necessarily know how much or if I were going to get into the overtime until like the actual minute of the, like the snap and when we were going out there, they sent me in, and it was just trying to figure out just what I had to do. It was just pretty much going out there and doing my job. Did, did Justin tell you to go in? Uh, yeah, he did tell me to go in, actually, because one of the plays, 
he felt that I guess like my speed would actually help for that play. So he figured he he should uh, he told me to go in there. I guess so. It was really it was a really nice thing. You know, helps with uh, <laughs> I I appreciate it. <laughs>